All right, well, here we are at Win Las Vegas inside the beautiful Blue Wire Studios. I'm Sandy Steck from Coast 103.5, across from the beautiful, lovely couple, mm -hmm. David Foster, Catherine McPhee. Thank you guys Hi. for coming here today. Hey, we're happy to be here. Hi, Sandy. What you don't know is their two-year-old, Rennie, is right outside <laughs> having a moment, having a moment. <laughs> having a mommy meltdown. Like but I know mommy. you guys You guys are here for your tour, uh, which is, we have a lot to go over, and we'll try to do it in a timely fashion. Uh, an intimate evening with David Foster, Hitman Tour. Right, we get confused a little because Kat and I tour together as the Cat and Dave show. I was just going to say, this is really an intimate evening with David Foster. It's all of his his main show that he's been doing for many, many years. And he's just sort of sprinkled in some of us um, special guests like me and Pia Toscana and Martin. Um, yeah, Martin. Yeah, right. So really, it's David's show. But, uh, you know, we're married, so he thought he'd drag me along. <laughs> She's free. Oh, well. It's free. I'm going to leave that one alone. Yeah. But I did see some clips because I will be going to the show tonight at Encore Theater. Oh, great. Beautiful theater. And it seems like there are some surprises. What I've seen online, I love that you guys just play with each other. It's fun to watch the dynamics, not only of just hearing you sing and, and, and you know, be a producer, but just watching you guys be a couple and have fun with each other. I like that. Yeah, we've, we've sort of honed it over the last couple of years, our sort of banter with each other. And every <laughs> night, something happens. Like, we stick to sort of a loose script, but every night, a zinger, she'll hit me with a zinger. I think you're, right. we're, we have, it's a relatable moment for people, right? Anyone who's married or even a long-time relationship, there's, you know, it's like, we have the uh, unconventional age difference, but we have the same universal struggles and themes of a typical couple. Remember that time I was talking on stage about... Um, you know that song by uh, uh, Eric Clapton, you know uh, Layla or whatever. And I was like, no, I don't. I don't think I was born that kind of thing. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, but I love that. That's not the re relatable part. <laughs> no, that's true. Well, it's cute. It's adorable. I think it's, it's funny. Fun. It's fun. We poke fun at ourselves. Don't take ourselves too seriously. Seriously, and we have a really great time. And I think the audience enjoys kind of seeing a, you know, behind the curtain. You know, my parents have been married 50 plus years, almost 60, but they laugh at the same things. I've noticed that with couples, you're, the humor has to be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to sure. take each other lightly. For sure. It's the only yeah. way to get through life. For sure. Right. And I know this is not your first time at the Win. You've been here before. I would call him a Win OG. You are. I love this hotel. I mean, Steve Wynn had such vision, starting with Treasure Island, and then Mirage, and then Bellagio, and then Win, and then Encore. I mean, what vision this guy had. And... Uh, yeah, uh, it's always a treat for us to come. Oh, we're staying in the like the great suite and we're just, yeah. you know, we're pampered and, you know, it's great. Well, that's the funny thing. Like I, especially when you come somewhere like here, do you get to relax a little bit? You're staying at the Holiday Inn, right? I am. I am. <laughs> Got it. I am. Yeah. Travel Lodge, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we do get to relax. Yeah, we, we had a great, great day today. We went to the gym and went to lunch with Rennie and Kat went shopping. And, <laughs> and, and, yeah, just like, it's just fun to kind of just walk around and. We'll go to the pool tomorrow with our son. It's great. There's do you ever have, this is a random question, but being entertainers, do you ever have shows, like in a place like Las Vegas, so many people are performing probably at the same time, people who you want to see but you can't because you are performing yourself? Yeah. We, we um, like I told you last night, we went and saw John Lovett. Yeah, that John was Lovett great. Yeah. The Lap Factory. Factory. He was great. And he's going to come to our show tomorrow night. Oh, fun. Uh, I just ran into Mark McGrath from Sugar Ray. Oh, cool. He's going to come tomorrow night to the show. Um yeah, it's kind of a nice little. I wanted to you know, see Adele one night when we were doing our thing. So she, yeah, she there's canceled. always is she this weekend. No, no that performing. Was, no, is, right? but I'm just saying in general we were here. I don't know how long ago and she tried Adele to get was, tickets to our show and she couldn't. She couldn't get tickets. We were sold out. So if Adele can't get tickets, I mean, what how did you get in, Sandy? <laughs> no, but we've actually managed to go see a lot of great things. Like we saw uh, Buble as you know Michael Michael Buble. Right. We saw uh, we've managed to do. Quite a bit of things, but usually we're here just typically for his shows and we're in and out, but yeah. we make the most of it. I am amazed that your two-year-old son, Rennie, travels with you. How is he as a traveler? Does he understand what you guys are doing? He is really starting to uh, understand like being in a new place. I mean, he's been here many times since he was a very little baby, but I think he's like, this is the first time he's now two in four months. So he's excited that he's in a new environment. Um, and you know, like traveling with, a kid, oh, they have a little, you know, traveling with a little kid is um, a lot of, like, a lot, it's, it's, I mean, we have a great time. I mean, he's sometimes great and sometimes not, but yeah. we'd rather have him with us um, than not. And we know that that is going to, that, 
clock is going to run out. You know, you only have so long to kind of take them so everywhere. Mm -hmm. What about the phrase terrible twos? Is that, does that resonate at all? Yeah, it sort of kicked in in the last month. It definitely kicked in. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. thought, ah, it's not going to happen to us, but it did. It did? Oh, but yeah. But it's okay. Work. <laughs> but actually, he moves through them pretty fast. And um, <clears throat> and then like this week, he's had, he's had no meltdowns, really. No. I mean, not like what you saw. That's not really a meltdown, in case you didn't know. Oh. That's just like crying for mommy. That's a typical everyday moment. Oh, okay. But a meltdown is... Different, different thing. Okay. Yeah, right. so he's been free, meltdown free, which has been really nice. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. That's something to celebrate. Yeah, that's okay. They'll be back next week, I'm sure. What now? I know he's good on the drums. I saw that video you showed me. Is he into music because of what you do, or is it just um, something he kind of picked up? He seems to be, you know, obviously he's immersed in it, you know, just by osmosis. He seems to be, uh, he seems to enjoy it. But um, he can't sing, so I don't know what that's going to be. Oh, that's going to turn it. I mean, he really can't sing. I mean, but, I agree he can't sing, but he's two. It's not like, you know. Yeah, but most two year olds, like, they can hit a note, you know. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. We'll see. No hope? No pressure. No <laughs> hope. I mean, I literally, the drums, I, I've never taught him anything because he won't let me teach him anything. So what, what whatever he's gotten, he picked up. came up to own. you guys and said, Mom and Dad, depending on how old he is, <laughs> I want to be a musician. This is what I want. Well, I'd say try tennis. <laughs> <laughs> I Roger Federer, I'd take, you know, <laughs> over Travis Barker. Oh, I mean, I would say the same thing my dad probably said to me. is like, I want to be an actress. And he says, oh, please be anything but an actress, which is like what I ended up, you know, pursuing. So he'll, I'll probably say, oh, gosh, good luck. But he'll just do what he, what he wants. Meant to do. I wonder yeah. if there's something in us just psychologically that when we hear somebody say, oh, God, don't, it makes us want to do it more, mm -hmm. you know, because we all be. have that rebellious. Could be. I mean, teachers in school, like, yeah. you just want to defy. Yeah. Whatever it it's is. It's just, you know, it's a lot of pressure, right, for a kid whose father's been so successful in the music industry and then he wants to do music. And, and mother. Well, but I'm talking, yeah. You're a different level. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lot of pressure that he doesn't know about yet, but we'll just, you know. Take it one day at a time, yeah. as they say. Let's talk He'll about it. He'll have to find his way, for sure. He's got two great parents. His own way. Well versed, <laughs> well versed in the industry. What, uh, let's talk about your jewelry line. Oh, yeah. KMF Jewelry. Yes. I did not realize you were so big into jewelry. Is that a Love. KMF piece? No. no. Oh. Catherine McPhee Foster. Is I wear what? lots of different that pieces. I mean, I, I'm such a fan of so many different designers, and so I branch out. And But yes, it's KMF Jewelry. We are direct to consumer. We are launching on a different platform in October, which we're very excited about. I'm not going to say yet, because I want to make sure. It... It's got three initials. Okay. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, figure it out. No, she, um, Kat, you know, she's always had this great love. I couldn't figure out, I've said it before, but you know, I'd be like asleep or, or watching TV in the bedroom. It's like 11 o'clock at night. She's not coming to bed. It's 12 o'clock. She's not coming well, to bed. Well, this was before and, I had a child. Now yeah. I'm in bed at nine. Yeah. <laughs> and she's in the bathroom playing with her jewelry, like for hours, like just putting this one here and try this one and then sit. I mean, it's just kind of weird. Oh, I thought you were going to say it was just like scrolling on Instagram like <laughs> no, the rest of us. No, no, <laughs> no. But she is obsessed with it in the best way. And I think that's an honest approach to, you know, selling. Because if she loves it, I think she can convince other people that they will love it too because, um, you know, it's honesty. Yeah. They, I think people can trust her. Thank you. Five Look bucks. That. <laughs> a glowing review from hubby. Yeah. yeah. And congratulations on Boop. Yeah. That is finally, it's happening. Right, so for those of you that don't know, um, boop, boop, -doo. Uh, I've been working on Betty Boop the musical along with a bunch of, an army of people. Um, and it looks like we're finally going to Chicago in November. We're out of town, as they say it. See if you can hone it and make out it. Out of town perfect. trial, as they would say. And then if we do well there, we'll be in Broadway uh, in April of 24. If we suck in Chicago, <laughs> we won't get to Broadway. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works, but. It isn't? No, I mean, you have to define sucking. It could yeah. be. Ticket sale. I mean, it just depends on. Yeah, that's. We actually have ticket sales already, right? You do. Crazy. But you've worked on this a long time, yeah. Yeah. Just because you're going to get bad reviews in Chicago doesn't mean you're going to not get to Broadway. Okay. Hmm. This is why they you work, like how though. I said. I I like you this. like how I said you're going to get bad reviews. No, no, no. I don't. I don't. I don't anticipate getting. She's bad like, reviews, honey, let's see how bad they are first. No, I'm. Yeah. Just, <laughs> you'll, you'll probably get great reviews, but even if you so. get bad reviews, it doesn't you mean know, you're not going Broadway to Broadway. Broadway doesn't take kindly. To people like me coming in, you know, you know, non Broadway, non New Yorker types. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Shania Twain when she broke the mold with her country thing, coming from Canada and then moving to Nashville. That was like, like I don't, away. I don't agree. Where do you come up with that theory? Because um, I know people that Broadway doesn't like that are pop writers. Well, like maybe them. their songs weren't very good. 
Okay. What made you so inspired to create this? Well, I was honestly, I was just asked. Your really? songs are great. I was just asked. So. So you took if it they don't like it, they're just challenge. jealous. Sorry? You took it on as like a new challenge or something? Yeah, it was like, I mean, every, yeah, because people have asked me that before, Sandy. Like, why this one? Because nobody else had asked. Mm -hmm. This is the first person that came along and said, hey, you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, Broadway sounds cool. Wow. So off the way. I mean, you could have said, and, and just to not give you genre, an not, not interested. I always sort of fantasize that I would be interested and that it's one day it might, you know, come my way. So. Just to yeah. give you an idea of how long he's been working on it, we met almost like 18 years ago. Yeah. And I think like two years into us knowing together, working together, just as colleagues, friends, is when he started playing this song on the piano. Why look around the corner when it's all right here? Remember? Mm -hmm. da, da, da. And he's, oh yeah, I've been working on music for Betty Boop. That was yeah. 16 years ago, and it's still <laughs> not gone to Broadway. So if this doesn't happen, I'm going to kill somebody because I'm sick of talking about Betty Boop. <laughs> You're like, I've heard it for 18 years. I'm tired. Yes, right. exactly. So our radio station, uh, mm -hmm. Coast 103.5, very big. Oh, we love, I Coast love Coast 103. Radio. I love that you love us. Do that again. Coast 103.5, Los Angeles. Yeah. I don't know if they still it. do that, but. Well. A version of it. I love, yes. And I love that. I would like to take that for, for my own personal show. <laughs> well, well, people should know, Sandy, that, um, you know, for somebody like me who has written a lot of top 40 hits, but. A lot of my songs get shoved into the AC pile, which is adult contemporary. Mm -hmm. And so a station like Kiss in Los Angeles won't won't play some of those songs, but Coast yeah. became like my home. We are for, all about it. And also yeah. the best channel for Christmas music. Oh, yes. Yeah. The best. Thank you. That's exactly where I was going. We usually switch to Christmas music November-ish. I yeah. know. Our it's so great. Go, Absolutely. Ape, you know what? Uh, they lose their mind. Yeah, it's the best. Which I was going to ask you about your album, your Christmas album, Christmas songs. Oh, good, right? good idea. Yeah, just came out a few months in December. But I, from what I understand, that was your Catherine, your brainchild. That was was that something you wanted to do more than David? Or nope. no, no, you really? see that guy sitting over there, right there, Mark, Mark Johnson, our manager. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can't see him. He was. It was his bright idea. It was idea. his bright oh. idea. Of course, it's easy to go, hey, uh, do a Christmas album, and then we have to do all the work. So we did seven songs last year. So it was a sort of like half a. LP. Yeah. Uh, and then this year we've done six more. And um, and it'll come out as a full album for whatever that like means. Like a completed Would album. It be like a volume two type volume thing? Volume two kind oh, of okay. thing. Yeah. I don't know exactly how they're going to work that whole thing out, but okay. It's like We're on Loma Vista Records, uh, and it's a great rec little record company. And uh, we have high hopes for selling at least 5,000 cars. <laughs> <laughs> Set the bar in the middle. Yeah, Set the right. bar in the middle. Uh, well, I think it's exciting. I love the holidays. Do you guys like the holidays? Love. Get and with right. a child, with a two-year-old, oh, you get to see it from a new set of eyes. You know, Mr. Bahumbug over here, when you have ready, like you're to be refreshed. Yeah. How fun no, it was during the sure. holidays to have sure. a little kid. For sure. I mean, he doesn't know yet, but this this Christmas he will, for sure. Yes, it's so much fun. And I always, my mom always made a big deal of decorating the house, getting the decorations out, and I I think it's just so much fun. Yeah, mm. that's cute. Well, I know you guys see a lot of people in what you do. You know a lot of people. You travel a lot. Random question, but have you ever met anyone that you got nervous meeting or you kind of fangirled out for? Like, oh, my God, I'm in the presence of whoever. Yeah, I was right here in Las Vegas. David helped arrange uh, tickets for me and my <clears throat> then-husband. And um, what? it was for Celine Dion's concert. Oh. And, and you he met, got me you backstage. Her, right? Yeah, and she was... There was only two other people backstage, and she was holding the couple's baby. They brought the baby mm. with them. They were this, like, um, Montreal couple. They were, they were speaking French, and I just thought, wow, look at her holding their baby and being so personable. And, and then the concert blew my socks off. And then when I met her, I started to almost cry. Oh. It was really kind of, oftentimes, was I'm like, nice? so, so nice. I almost, I didn't cry because she was mean. I cried because she's just so lovely, and, and I just grew up idolizing her mm. yeah and then you um let's see who else for you oh she she wants to hang with dave chappelle oh dave chappelle so cool who doesn't come on that's got to be your number one or number two go-to oh right? as a comic as yes a comic, yeah. it's just dave chappelle would be so cool to like spend a night with no i mean uh, like that <laughs> i don't mean like that God. i mean like you know a dinner at a club and then we go for Drinks after and what? Just the two of you? No, like with a group of people. Mm. You, you be, might you might be allowed. You would be invited. I've been to dinner with him, so. <laughs> well, all right. So then, fine. We'll go by ourselves. Oh my god. <laughs> what about you? Any or um, 
you know, I loved getting to know my, I have a son-in-law named Tommy Haas, who's a former uh, number one tennis player in the world. And uh, he introduced me to Roger Federer, who has become a friend, not a close friend, but he a friend. He was at our wedding. Yeah, he was at our wedding. Mm -hmm. And I got to say, when I'm around him, it just feels like royalty to me. I mean, I, I think he's just a what phenomenal about him guy. Makes you feel like that. Um, well, first of all, his charisma is just he's off the charts. Like unbelievably like gorgeous. You it's kind of crazy. You, you can't believe if you walked in here right now, this room would light up twice as much. As I honestly I didn't know how, because I was never really into tennis at that time. Now I love tennis, but when I saw him, he was he kind of came to our wedding in London like as a sort of fluke. He was friends with his he's friends with his daughter and. Anyway, they came and it was a blast. But when I saw him all dressed up in his suit, I never thought he was handsome. And it's just like, it's not just the way he looks. It's like his presence. It's his, yeah. his he's so, uh, you love that word, affable. He's just. And his wife is fantastic. Oh, fantastic. Well. Just so sweet and kind. And there's yeah. just a real something about Do you believe in auras? Stress? Like people, they're energetic, you know, can, it's an energy field. Yeah, I, I, I guess so, yeah. Star power is what you always Star say. Power, Star yeah. power, yeah, yeah. The it thing. Yeah. Do you know, last time I was here, who walked by? Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul. Brian they were Cranston. randomly here for a wedding. Wow. And it was just such a funny moment. I'm like, oh, is this They walked happen? by there while you right were... Right here during the interview. Did you stare? Uh, yes, and then we stopped, and then they went and talked. It was it was just oh, so cool. funny, though. Like, nice. you just never know how life yeah. is. What weird who's, your, who's your live dinner date? My live dinner yeah. date? You want to have dinner with? <sighs> Bradley Cooper. Oh, good one. I mean... It's only dinner. Oh, <laughs> I got to think about that then. Never mind. Never mind. It's informative. It's not playful. Uh, you know what? I follow a lot of, uh, not motivational, but I love self-empowerment kind of stuff. Lewis Howe and Jay Shetty and, you know, uh, uh, Joe Dispenza life, into meditation stuff. My new live dinner date would be Peter Atia. Oh, this yeah. guy, I'm reading this book called Outlive. I saw that on your Instagram oh, and I want to know more about that. Gosh. It's pretty incredible. Well, read the book because he's the man behind it. But it's a fascinating book and I've had so many people like, I don't even read that much, but I'm really into this book. It's I feel like it's transforming the way I think and feel about nutrition and 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 working out and why you work out opposed to like, oh, I need to fit into these jeans. It's like so much more than it's about, no, I, I want to live as long as possible and I want to live as long as possible really well. Mm. Um, and it's just completely changed. I mean, there's so much science behind it that it makes it really and really kind of um, like – you kind of believe, buy into it. It's not like you're buying into a fatty diet or a fad workout. It's a lifestyle. And you've heard that before, but just the way he puts it is just very, it's very artful the way he puts the whole thing together. Well, and once you think about, like, this is kind of deep, but I believe in this. Our cells hear us. You know, everything we say and Self feel. Self-publicity. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's amazing Vision how everything's works. connected. Mm. Yeah, for sure. And by the way, off, top, off that topic, but my live dinner date is Elon Musk. That's what I want. Oh to, yeah, that's who I want to meet. Is it really? Yeah, I think. What would you ask him? Um, I just would like let him talk, and I just listen. Okay. You know, take notes. Or yeah, <laughs> or just you know, I mean, I just think he's like we talk about, we learn about in history about people like Einstein and Shakespeare and you know um, Leonardo da Vinci, all these great people that in the past. I think he's one of them. Yeah, I really mm. do. Did you hear about him and Mark Zuckerberg? Apparently, they agreed to a cage match in Vegas. Wait, what? I don't know if this is just something I saw on Facebook or not, but I'm letting you know. Mark Zuckerberg's going to kill that. him. I think I saw that on Instagram, too, but I thought it was just like a meme or something. I didn't think it was real. That doesn't <sighs> sound knows? like... I scroll, and then we never know if what we're looking at. But do they not like each other? I don't know. Hmm. Mark Mark would take him out. You think? Oh, yeah. Well, Mark is like... Mark's in great shape. I like how we say that. It's like we know him. You know? <laughs> well, we've been around we've him. Been around we've been him, around him, so... Him. We know some secret things about him that he's very into fitness. Now, final question, because I want to know. Final? What? We're just getting warmed up here. Oh, we can, put your feet up. We can relax okay. a little more I if you'd about like. you i got to get I a mean, massage. No, you, I'm just kidding. You might have a show to I go to that you're yeah. part of. Uh, what is your idea of a perfect day from sunup to sundown? Like, what would you love to be doing during the whole day that you're like, dang, this is it for me? I think um, we do that a lot, but go ahead. Yeah. Okay, um, my son sleeps in till 7 a.m. and not 6 or 6.30. And then I wake up at 7 with him and I'm refreshed. Um, we get breakfast, we go for a walk, and I love to go play tennis. So someone watches the baby while I play tennis. Uh, we all have lunch together. Um, this is a non-working day, just yes. so you know. a day um, off. And... 
Yeah, maybe I like I work in the garden. I'm really obsessed with um, cutting flowers and putting them in vases. What else? Massage, body work. Yes, a massage sounds fabulous. <laughs> And then, you know, we go out to dinner with some friends in the neighborhood. Oh, I'm finally included. <laughs> you were included in all those things, except for the picking of flowers. You're not really interested no. in that. <laughs> David, what about you? Well, mine would look like... What about uh, the tennis? Sorry? You What about the tennis? Do you play tennis with yeah. me? What? Uh, well, my day would wake up, the perfect day would wake 930. up without back pain. Yeah. Without Because I, I got terrible back pain. You sure um, does. And it's really starting to get me down. Um, but I'd wake up on a yacht. In Italy, oh. with my wife, we'd have coffee, we'd walk into the town, we'd have lunch, take a nap in the afternoon, and go to an incredible restaurant at night. Oh, that's so nice. We're going to do that in August. I know. <laughs> I didn't include Rennie, sorry, but he could be, he's welcome to go on any of it. Well, he gets a little exhausting, so that's probably smarter than you. We'll be in the next room. We're something. obsessed. I mean, I'm obsessed with him, but uh, mm. um, yeah, but he, no, we're going to leave him home for that one. Yeah. Um, I have a like question me. for you. Sure. Who's your dead dinner date? My <laughs> dead dinner date? Can't be a family member. It can be any century and any time of their life. And language is not a barrier. Oh, my God. This is a tough one. Whenever I get a question like this, my brain stops because well, I'm so just, nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Just it, No, there's no wrong answer. But And tomorrow it could be a different answer. In 10 minutes, it could be a different answer. I, I'm blank right now. Okay, how I, about... Um, I'm blank. How about like... Uh, uh, my dead know, dinner uh, date. Richard Pryor. Oh, that would be a great one. And you one. could pick any time of his life. So I would, I would if I were you, uh, I'd who's pick Richard a younger Pryor? time of his life. Sorry? Who's that? He was a comedian, 70s. Oh, yeah. yeah. You weren't born. Okay. Oh. <laughs> he, was, he was a pioneer. I love how much you know about comedians. Yeah, though. no, I love it. And Have so you now, ever done stand-up? No. Oh my would gosh, you that would be hysterical oh my God, to see. Can you imagine? You'd be really bad. I mean, do you? you I'm guys, pretty good on stage. I don't think you'd be good. at Wouldn't stand -up. you think though? Your show is kind of a that little bit cute. as an open mic for you two to have fun and. Yeah, it's a bit of a stand-up. I'd like to. No, he's. This guy's very funny. I mean, John Lovitz thought I was. I. You are funny. I just don't. It's not the same thing as stand-up. No, Dana Carvey thought I was funny. I think maybe he's just saying that. You get really nervous because you have to remember li lines and stuff. Yeah. You? Um, I was thinking about uh, what you do to your kids, you know. And when I was a kid, my parents would say, "Hey, play the piano." I happen to not mind it when they would say play for our friends. Okay. But a lot of kids, I'd, I would never do that to my son. Hey, like play drums for, for our yeah, friends. Yeah, you're unique like that because I didn't. No, I didn't mind it all. No, you didn't like it. But if I was to say to you right now, tell me a joke. Could you? Yeah. Okay. Tell me a joke. You want me to? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I've had six knee surgeries. And uh, one of the most recent, I had to have a donor part put in my knee. Uh, which means I have a dead person inside of me. I love it. <laughs> uh, it's actually been eight months since a live person's been. <laughs> <laughs> good, very good. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I usually trail off and let the audience figure it out. As we did. And That's I made you laugh. That made me very happy. That's very good. Thank you. That's very, right. very good. I might be pitting a little bit right now. I was not expecting that. How did the interview turn to me? You know, he's like very good that. at that. I like I doing know, that because I'm interested in people, you know. I know, and thank you guys for... You could be a little more interested in me, that's all I'm saying. Oh, 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 oh. my God, the shots I'm fired today. I cannot months. handle <laughs> it. <laughs> I'll be honest, I was surprised you even had time to sit down. Like, usually, you know, if you have a show, some yeah. people get in their head, they just want to be left alone. Yeah, yeah we, we... Well, we did a show Saturday night, so um, we're sort of fresh. But if you go a couple... And then we tour, like, 10, 15 dates at a time. And that's just great. You just it's true you, you roll out, roll in five minutes before, and you're good. Mm -hmm. But when they're just sort of one-offs like this, it does. It's kind of like I compare it to now that I'm obsessed with this whole idea of working out is not just for your, you know, looking good in your pants. But it's like if you take more than four or five days off or a week, let's just say, from working out, if you go back to working out, you're weaker. You're not as strong. You lose your cardio um, abilities, and it's the same thing with like you. you, you be amazed, like even just a week or two weeks off from doing shows, you kind yeah. of feel rusty the next day. Yeah, like I'm just sort of going over it and what we're going to do tonight, and it's we've done it. A you're going to be great, times, honey. I'll be screaming for you out in the uh, audience. Well, are you, you're going tonight? Uh, yes, oh, I am. Great. Did you hear Adele? I think it was last week and forgot the lyrics to one of her songs. Oh, and I just love. She's so funny. She's yeah. so great. She can do no wrong, even when she's messing up. She's so human and she uh, is. sarcastic. Yeah. She's like, oh bloody hell, I forgot. And then she asked an audience member, "Have you ever forgotten a lyric?" Yeah, me? Oh, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. I literally just did it in Florida the other day. <laughs> what and do you do? Do you have that song from Waitress? Today's a day like any other. 
um, what did I do? I just, I, it's an out of body experience. Your hands start sweating and you just start mumbling, but you don't remember how you mumbled it. Like, or so, you'll drag out one line. So to, it's like your body remembers. Almost. I know what I did. I literally just stopped <laughs> singing and then I jumped back in for the. Sometimes when I'm playing piano, like if it's a, if it's a solo piece with, where there's no singers and I'm playing along and it's kind of like, you know, when you're driving and then all of a sudden you've gone three miles and you don't know how you drove the three miles. You don't remember. Yeah. And it's like, I'll be in like in the middle of it, like, what am I doing? Where the fuck am I? It's like, <laughs> what song is this? And what, I mean, it's really a weird feeling. But that also means you're so good at what you do that you, it's, Wrote. it's subconscious. Does that happen to you on, when you're doing stand up? Do you ever like just lose? It your... depends. I, I hate to say this, but when the audience is there and when it, when it, the vibe is so good, you, you can relax into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you, you just, Take a your everything in you takes a breath, yeah. and then the natural magic happens. And when the natural magic, you're like, oh, look at me being me again, look and not me re trying to remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I won't be relaxed tonight. Well, look, you know, we I won't be. <laughs> Why? Because I, it's like I come out for you know five minutes. It's like that shot out of a cannon thing. It's like, hi, all right. Well, I'm only here for two songs. Maybe you later. should throw on for a loop. Just walk it's right fine. out. I'll just have like a bourbon backstage. I'll be fine. So. Get it, girl. And you know, Get lastly, it. Sandy. <laughs> yes. I think we need to work on the eight months thing. I'll bring it up tonight in the show. <laughs> okay. See what wow. we can get going. Okay. okay. Eight months in one day, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> David Foster, Catherine McPhee, thank you so much Thanks for, for having this us. time. Great job. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you.